You're in the kitchen. All right. Welcome to another Kitchen Conversation. Jason Aspis, Jared Paul. Today we have one of the best pickleball players in the world joining us, fresh off of a triple crown in Brigham City, Utah, Tyson McGuffin. Tyson McGuffin is voted the most exciting athlete in all of electric. sports by Barstool most Sports. Electric. Most electric. That's of all I sports, not just pickleball. Made by Barstool Sports. Right. I mean, that's out of everybody in sport. Was that two, two times? different articles now? Two times. Two times. I saw the post today. I thought, I, was, I thought you were rehashing old information. No, no, man. No, not at all. I would, I would never do that. <clears throat> Tyson, welcome to the Kitchen Conversation. Glad to have you on. Uh, we haven't had a chance. We Obviously, we've spoken many times at, at events, uh, in tournaments, but uh, I, this is the first time getting you on the podcast. So, first of all, let's talk about Brigham City. I mean... How awesome was that? Triple Crown, first Triple Crown after playing three years on the PPA Tour. Uh, you looked refreshed. You looked youthful. Uh, tell us about that experience. Well, you know, uh, anytime that I show up to that lovely uh, town of Brigham City, I always just tend to play like a machine, if you know what I mean. Who doesn't want to go to Brigham City? I'll tell you what. Uh, best, uh, uh, best area in all of America. Uh, just kidding. There's, there's obviously not a whole lot going on in Brigham City. I actually grew up in a small town of about 10,000 people in central Washington, a little, little town called Lake Chelan. Um, and so that little podunk town there in northern Utah called Brigham City, honestly, is a lot like my uh, hometown. Um, so, uh, yeah, it just seems like anytime I, I'm, I'm in Brigham City, uh, that, that little area feels like home, small town, small town vibes. Um, always been a huge believer of the Klein family. The Klein family uh, is like the biggest ambassadors there, there in Brigham City. I've been going to Brigham City and playing TOC since 2016. Actually, uh, kind of a fun historic moment for me was uh, in 2018, I actually won my first men's doubles major with a guy by the name of Matt Goebel, who I uh, believe you guys may may know, may not. No, uh, right. Guy from, guy from, yeah, Guy from Spokane, Washington, played tennis at Whitworth University. Um, anyhow, so so got my first major there, 2018, and uh, I had actually taken four silvers in a row at TOC. Lost to Ben in 17, lost to Ben in 18, lost to Ben in 19, no TOC in 2020. And then in 2021, uh, it actually rained, uh, rained on that singles day. We ended up going indoors, played at the Pickler, which is an indoor facility there. Now that was the franchise facility uh, there in Utah. And uh, anyhow, like Ben ended up losing to J-Dub in the semis. I had played J- uh, I had played J-Dub in the winner's bracket final. Going into that winner's bracket final, I'm like, okay, this is my year. No more Ben. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to win the win the winner's bracket final. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take out J-Dub. Uh, it definitely did not happen that year. I ended up losing to J-Dub in three in the winner's bracket final. Spencer Smith ended up like beating Ben in like a backdrop match, beat him a gain of 15. I played Spencer in the bronze, beat Spencer, played J-Dub again. It's like 11 o'clock at night on, on a freaking Thursday night uh, in, you know, somewhere in Northern Utah and uh, ended up, ended up losing to J-Dub again. Uh, in that in that final so anyhow it's nice to get over the hump and obviously get my first singles title um you know and to be the second male player in history to get a triple crown super cool something very special to me uh something i definitely never thought i would i would achieve um but uh, you know and and i've, I've said this in a uh couple of interviews now you know the uh the full the full crew wasn't there. There was no J-Dub. There was no AL. The, you know, there was no Ben. So, you know, would you call it like a real uh, triple crown? I personally wouldn't. Um, but obviously, I will. Being 33, having four kids, being in this, you know, being in this game for the last eight years now, being on the PPU tour for the last three years, I will gladly take it. But uh, I, I think it's a much different story uh, when you have the heavy hitters around. Well, I, pre- um, I appreciate you saying that. I would have never brought that up. In fact, Jared and I take credit for beating Ben. He was using a frying pan, but we beat him anyway, and we don't mention that. I want to yeah. play. We just said we got to with a frying pan. <laughs> smart, smart. Uh, I should, I should take that route. <laughs> uh, no, that's awesome. And by the way, you mentioned Lake Lake Chelan. Is that right? Is that how you say that? Lake Lake Chelan. Oh yeah, Chelan. there's not a, not a. Not a whole lot going on there. Uh, my uh, dad was an orchardist. I actually grew up like out, like in the apple orchard, picking apples, pruning trees, 
my my mom owned a restaurant and uh yeah small little touristy town kind of like a Coeur d'Alene you know busy four months out of the year during the summertime and then it's dead as could be uh rest of the year but yeah i was i was a schlank kid growing up well so i i i googled it because i wanted to kind of get an understanding of where you were from and meanwhile i i was on the verge of booking my summer vacation there next year it looks like looks like the alps it's beautiful no it's beautiful man for sure you know central washington is a bit more deserty uh a bit more dry it's right in the middle of the uh, valley there um you know so, so you get all four seasons uh, definitely not as green and lush and pretty as Coeur d'Alene, but obviously a, a great, great destination there in central Washington. And, and you mentioned, <clears throat> you mentioned Coeur d'Alene because that's where you are now, right? Wait, hold on. Wait, wait, hold on. I, yeah. I'm not going to. Whoa, like, whoa, whoa. Are you going to slam a beer? I mean, triple crown? I, I'm a fat tire come, guy. You're a Miller Lite guy? Come on. Come on. Um, <laughs> I have no beer. Uh, but yeah, so I, I've been in Coeur d'Alene now for about uh, six years. Moved here in 2018. Uh, when I moved here, I um, I took a job at a club called Peak Tennis in Hayden. Um, took a job as a head tennis pro, taught tennis, taught pickle. Um, did that for about eight months, and then got a director job in Spokane, Washington, at a at a club called North Park North Park Athletic Club. Um, and uh, I did that up until. I met Wayne Dollard at Level Up Pickleball Camps, uh, taught for Wayne for about a year and a half, and then COVID hit, and right when COVID hit, I said, hey, you know what, it's time to put my big boy pants on, it's time to do my own thing, and, uh, and uh, on- honestly, over COVID is, uh, I, I, you know, how COVID either made people or it, or it, or it didn't, and, uh, you know, for someone like myself, I was working for somebody else, and I actually had six months to, like, uh, think about, you know, what I could do with my life or, you know, what I could do with my businesses. And, uh, yeah, it just made sense to kind of go my own direction, uh, start the YouTube channel, really kind of use free content with educational videos and with the podcast, uh, and kind of, and kind of use that as like a feeder program to get people to sign up for camps. Um, and, uh, yeah, now here we are, we've, we've had the camp business for about three years now. Um, I've taken a huge step back this year. I spent the first two years probably doing 20, 40 camps out of the year. Um, Kyle, obviously, as, uh, Kyle McKenzie, as you know, is the co-host, uh, for my podcast, also commentates for PPA and then is the lead for my camp company. So this year, KMAC has taken a, taken a huge step with, uh, I guess just kind of playing like a bigger part with the camps. So Kyle this year is doing 30 camps for me, but camps are selling out. We, uh, our, our camps are partnered up with discovery. Our camps are partnered up with chicken and pickle and our camps are partnered up with PPA. That's pretty <clears> cool. <throat> so you, you started out, I mean, the beginning before your tennis days, you start out as a wrestler. Is that right? I, I grew up as a wrestler man in central Washington. Yeah. Youngest of seven, uh, uh s- Six boys, one girl. Uh, my my dad was a wrestling coach for about thirty years. My oldest brother was an All American at Boise State. Uh, so kind of grew up in a rough and tough wrestling family. If you're a uh, if you're if your last name was McGuffin, you were you were bound to wrestle. What, you know what, what I mean? weight class did you wrestle? Uh, and, yeah, so I started wrestling at the age of five. Honestly, I I, I started wrestling like when I was in diapers. Um, and. Uh, uh, so I would say freshman year, high school, I was like 130. I was probably cutting down from like 145 though. So like, you know, once a week I was having to cut 15 pounds just to freaking make way suffer. And, I, re- uh, I, re- I wrestled know, so in high kind of school. Fun. Uh, so I, I know the, I know the drill and I wrestled one of oh, yeah, my freshman year. Love it. No, That's too never funny. Look back. Never uh, look back. <laughs> Never look back. And then sophomore year, you know, uh, things, things finally dropped for me, kind of, kind of went through puberty, if, if you know what I mean. And, uh, ended up bumping up to like 160. And by the, by the time I was like a sophomore in high school, like, like having my dad as a coach my whole life and him kind of pushing me to be like my oldest brother and pushing me to like want to wrestle in college and do all that. By the time I was a sophomore, I'm like, dad, I'm not going to cut weight anymore. I really don't like wrestling. I love you, but it's healthier that I may find something else. And so, um, yeah, like right around the age of, I don't know, let's like eighth grade or freshman year, I, I found tennis, fell in love with it. Uh, and kind of knew that was my outlet. Like that was, that was my way out. That was my way to, for like my dad and I to kind of save our relationship. That was my way to, uh, get some space for my dad <laughs> and uh and i mean uh you know just just being being the youngest of seven everybody wrestling 
Uh, it just it just wasn't wasn't were my you, dream. Were you, were you a growing good wrestler? Up in, yeah, so I won uh, I won like ten and under nationals. I won twelve and under nationals. Uh, did like freestyle Greco collegiate, you know, kind of kind of did all sorts of styles of wrestling. Um, kind of a funny story. Like my dad, uh, he would he would put all the kids in a van and we drive like ten hours to beat Montana, or we drive you know eight hours down to like Pocatello, Idaho. And and his deal was was that he'd say every two hundred miles everybody would have to get out and like run a mile so now here we are like there's a there's a bunch of 10 year olds and we're on the freeway and every 200 miles my dad would say get your ass out and i swear to god he would he would make all the kids get out he would he would drive in front of us on on the freeway on like that little side lane right and once we get to the mile marker if we didn't run it fast enough we'd all get to that mile marker he would stop the van we'd all get to the van and then he'd take off again you ever see the movie vision quest yeah, of course. Loud, I've loud seen that Swain. movie numerous loud times. Loud Swain. Yeah, oh, oh, totally. My dad must have watched that movie about Me a too. thousand times. Too. <laughs> uh, anyhow, so so yeah, every, his 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 deal was was that he'd say, "Hey, every two hundred miles, get your ass out." Obviously, if we'd run the mile fast enough, he would get to that mile marker. He would like open the door, and we'd all get in. But if he didn't run it fast enough, he'd take off again. <laughs> do you have video? Do you have videos of you wrestling? I may I may have come on. <laughs> so good. I may I may yeah I know I may I may have some old clips. I would I would definitely have to look is back. There, though. Is there any uh, pro pickleball player that you couldn't take in a wrestling match? Uh, you know what? I think I can handle most most guys. Now I'm I'm doing some cross training. Uh, I you know I didn't didn't used to box back in the day. Now my trainer. Uh, Craig Feisner, uh, has me, has me doing like a little bit of boxing as well. Definitely good for hand speed, good for, good for reaction speed and all that. So, um, so I have, I have the wrestling background. Now I have some boxing to so watch out, man. I'm a, I'm a dangerous right. man. Fair enough. If it ever comes to that, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll keep that in <laughs> mind. When, when did you get into pickleball? Obviously you've been playing for a long time. You're talking about playing TOC back in 17, uh, where did the transition go? Where did you first hear about pickleball and how did you end up taking it seriously? Yeah, man. So I was, I was a diehard tennis player, you know, um, worked in like a country club setting for about five or six years. I was doing like 60, 70 hour weeks doing USTA leagues, traveling with juniors and kind of doing all that. Also on the side, I was playing open tennis tournaments and, you know, I obviously still had that inner fire and like wanted to compete and, and wanted to kind of get out there and test myself and all that. And, um, yeah, man, I think there's kind of one thing, one thing led to another, but, um, there was, there was a gentleman at my tennis club. His name's Bill Chott. Uh, he used to take a tennis lesson from me each week and he ended up like blowing out his shoulder and uh, he kept bugging me about this silly game that he was playing at a local YMCA with a, with a couple old timers. And uh, he kept he kept telling me he's like, hey, he's like, if you ever want to come play, he's like, it's it's Tuesday Thursday nights from seven to ten, right? And uh, I'm like I'm like Bill. First of all, I'm I'm doing ten hour days teaching. There's no way I'm gonna I'm gonna you know play at that time at night. Anyhow, about four weeks in, he he ends up getting me out seven o'clock at night. I ended up getting my ass kicked by a couple guys in like their fifties and sixties that night. They were all like four O's and four fives. I was like hitting returns and staying back. And I was like trying to hit third balls and stay back. I had no idea what I was doing. I was totally playing the wrong way. And, um, anyhow, after that night, I ended up going home. I got on YouTube. I got very educated. I watched a freaking ton of content about pickleball. I, I found, I found the right way to play. I came back. I came back about a week later, played some doubles with those guys. Uh, obviously played much better and um yeah one thing kind of led to another actually about three months after that this is like this I, th I think this was uh uh this was like april of 2015 and so by august of 2015 the big Coeur d'Alene classic tournament uh uh was taking place and so i i thought i would try four or five singles so i ended up you know i like i uh uh Took off Sunday morning from like Yakima, Washington at 6 a.m. Drove all the way to Coeur d'Alene, got to Coeur d'Alene at 9 a.m. And played, played singles that day, played four or five, beat everybody. And, and I'm what, and as, after I got my medal, I'm like watching the 5 0 guys play, right? And I'm like, shoot, I'm like, I can, I can beat those guys. And so about, about six months later, 
played in my first 5-0 tournament. Uh, ended up playing like Curtis Campbell first round. If you guys know Curtis Campbell, he was he was a guy from Oregon back in the day. Doesn't doesn't uh, play much anymore. Anyhow, it was called like the Cougar Classic Invitational. Uh, it'd been going on in Portland, Oregon for like two decades. It was like this indoor tournament. You know, uh, 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 the gyms all beat up or like using a jugs ball. I ended up playing that night until about 1.30 in the morning. Curtis Campbell and I, I ended up losing to Curtis first round. And I came all the way back through. I beat like Brian Ashworth in the back draw. I beat Chris Mills in the back draw. Beat all those guys, right? And then play Curtis again at like midnight. There's nobody there. Literally nobody there. It's just Curtis and I. And I ended up beating Curtis two out of three. Playing the game to 15. Lost like 14, 16. Drove all the way home that night. And then it was my son's birthday that very next day. And I swear to God, my legs were so freaking toast. I could barely get up. <laughs> I was That's smoked. That's so good. What, um, what, year, what year was that? I was smoked. Bro, this is so, yeah. So 2015 was my first quarter lane tournament in, in August. Played four or five singles. And then about five months later, played the... Cougar Classic in January uh, of 2016. And that was kind of like my first big year. Um, uh, ended up playing TOC that year. Took bronze at TOC. Took silver at nationals that year in, in singles. Ended up like taking fourth at nationals as well in, in men's doubles with Callan Dawson. So that was kind of like my, my, my first big first big year of rock and so, roll. Okay, so obviously we talked about Barstool having called you the most electric player twice now. Two times. Two articles about it. Um, but you've obviously, you've kind of orchestrated this in a way, right? Your, your persona on the court is awesome, right? It's, it, I feel like it's, it's a little bit, I'm not, not saying this is not really you, but you're putting on a show out there, right? Have, and, haven't and, you come out and said that, that this was something that you kind of created over the pandemic where you're like, I'm going to, tr I'm going to transform, right? Well, you know, I mean like the end goal as an athlete is what? Is, is to freaking win, to make money, to be a good dude, and to market yourself as much as possible and try to be as authentic as you can, right? And so, yes, maybe, I be, I'm, uh, maybe I'm putting on a show a little bit, but to my core, it's very authentic. It's who I am. Um, but you were like, you were like I'm going to let know, the freak flag fly. Uh, like, I'm going for it. I'm getting the tats. I'm growing the hair. No, and, and the thing is, like, uh, I, I kind of wanted to be, like, larger in life in that sense. Nobody else was doing it. I, I wanted to, like, make myself uh, as uh, marketable as I could with, with brands and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, I, I mean, obviously, I, I've, I've always kind of had a couple couple screws loose uh, growing up as a wrestler, you know, being the youngest of seven, getting getting beat up on by my brothers as a kid. And, um, yeah, I, I, I just think, like like, the fashion thing – the mullet, the tattoos, like a lot of my brothers have tattoos as well. So that's, that's definitely nothing, nothing new in my family. Um, but yeah, man, I, I just kind of want to have some fun with some colors. I, I wanted to have some fun with my design and I wanted to, I guess, show the, uh, pickleball world that like I could have some flair and like, I wasn't screaming pickleball and I could show some swag and I could show just like this new modern look of like a total stud. When I saw the moment a couple of weeks ago where Matt Wright, he had his shoe blow up and they came running out with Skechers boxes for him. Uh, I wanted to know if you were right. in the back sabotaging his shoes just for that moment. Is that, can you, can you deny that? Was that you? Uh, I had nothing to do with any of that, but I was glad that he is wearing the best shoe in the game. Uh, and not only is it the uh, best looking shoe in the game, it's the most durable shoe and by far the most comfortable shoe in, in the game. So, um, no, I mean, my whole Skechers partnership has been great. Been with him for the last two years. Uh, and what's awesome about Skechers is not only have they dove into PPA, but any entity that's in pickleball, USAPA, APP, MLP, they've gone all in. So, um no, it's been a it's been it's been a great partnership. They've totally made me feel like feel like family. They've made my family feel like family. Uh, kind of a kind of a cool story. After we signed with Skechers, about two weeks later, it was like a bomb got dropped off on our front door, and literally like kids' shoes everywhere, lifestyle gear. Uh, they totally took took care of the whole family. So uh, I can't I can't say enough uh, great things about that company. And not not only um, you know have they been great to us, but uh, uh, yeah, I, I just think they put off you know such a good image. They're global. It's super iconic, and uh, and it's and it's freaking Skechers, baby. It is Skechers, and, and 
the the shoes that you're wearing are those pink, those kind of pink multicolored shoes. Are those for sale? Can I buy those? Yeah. These guys right here, yes, you can definitely buy these. These are called the VCPs, uh, Viper Corp Pros. Um, you will not get that logo on the back, un unfortunately. Why, why not? Uh, but, yes, you can go to Skechers. Uh, you know, uh, maybe with this uh, with this uh, new signing that I'm, that I'm doing with Skechers, uh, maybe in the future there's – it's going to be a logo on the shoe, but as of now, it's just custom for oh, me. It's a total no-brainer. Um, I, I, I have those shoes. I love them, and I'd love them even more if I could rock your logo. So just something to think about. Right. All right. Well, I've been, I've been, I've been knocking, on, knocking on the door for a long time now, so I would assume it's going to happen here very soon. But, uh, but yes, yeah, so you can purchase those shoes at Skechers.com. You can also purchase those shoes at Pickleball Central uh, for anybody that's playing a PPA tournament, uh, whether you're uh, coming to watch, coming to play, or, or maybe uh, coming to get MacGuffin or KMAC after the PPA tournament. Um, you can go by the Pickleball Central uh, store and uh, check out some of those Skechers shoes. And whether you want to buy mine, my white and pinks, or uh, Catherine's blues, um there is a wide range of colors and, you got black you got uh, black you got selection. black right here you got white i have white ones i love them they oh, uh, yeah they're holding up oh, incredibly yeah. well and they're actually really comfortable yeah we actually so um so when i i i actually played a huge part in like the whole shoe design uh, i obviously knew nothing about shoes like beforehand so uh keith keith shelton is like is is their main shoe product guy over at sketchers and so um keith you know get get uh getting to work with keith and and, and really kind of getting to understand you know like the shoe design and the shoe model and and uh how your foot moves in the shoe and stuff like that was all very interesting and obviously they have a partnership with goodyear so the outsole it's if you can see here the outsole of the shoe is a goodyear outsole it's actually very thick um so even though the shoe is a little lighter and even though the uh, mesh isn't as um i guess rough or uh rough or stern as like some of like your asics or like your adidas or like the barricades or like the nikes um i honestly feel like just with how thick this outsole is it like it like allows the uh shoe to last a lot longer and, and really gives it that durability so you talk about you're involved with the design of the shoes uh are you are you working on any other products for sketchers any kind of apparel or any other ex line extensions yeah, so um, I am very close to re-upping my deal with, with Skechers, and with that deal would come some clothing, um, and don't know how how that looks or if that's going to be available to the public and all that, uh, but we're definitely working on it. Um, as we all know, Skechers obviously is, uh, is, is more of a shoe company than, you know, than they are a clothing company, uh, so I think like the main focus right now is uh, – is just uh, making sure the shoes are selling and providing different colors. Um, and uh, yeah, I think just, just really trying to focus on pushing the shoes. And then obviously the, the clothing is going to come later. <clears throat> so Tyson, you're, you're, you're the father of four kids. Is that right? Uh, and correct. you have a podcast, you have, you know, the Skechers deal where you're designing clothes and shoes. You have your camps, you have the tours, you're on tour for most of the year. How do you do it? How do you balance all this out and manage to stay on top of your game with, with you know, all these young kids coming into the game and, and coming from tennis backgrounds and being, you know, some of them 15 years younger than you? No, for sure. So I think, you know, th this was the first year where I've been extra smart um, just with uh, my future as an athlete. And I've taken a huge step back, I, I think, as far as, like, the business stuff, as far as camps – uh, I just have less obligations. And so with having more time, uh, anytime I'm home now, pretty much it's just content. It's five days a week of training. Um, I mean, this is the most educated, this is the most healthiest, and this is like the strongest I've been ever. I, I, I feel like, uh, I'm with the company called wild health, wild health, uh, uh, essentially does like DNA testing for athletes and they do DNA testing for a wide range of people. Um, but basically, uh, wild health. They sent me this uh, sent me this kit. In this kit, you uh, take a saliva swab, you take a blood sample, you send it back in, and then based on your based on your DNA, they prescribe you the right diet, they prescribe you the right exercise program, they they prescribe you the right supplements, they prescribe you just how to how to live your day what's based that, on your what's DNA. That cost? Right? So, 
Yeah, uh, it's it's definitely a uh, uh, definitely a little little chunk that is. Um, Let's just say I happen to know somebody that is very well known in the health space. They got me in the back door, got me a sweet deal. Uh, it sounds awesome. I, uh, I, I, I might look into it. it. Sounds really cool. Yeah, yeah. So uh, don't know the exact uh, cost on all that, um, but but I do know that that the resources and the education and the people that I've met, met through Wild Health uh, it's been super inspiring and. Uh, really have just allowed me to find a much better version of myself. And I personally feel like in the last six or eight months, like I've been able to find like a 3% better version of myself. And uh, as we all know, at the highest level, if you can be just like one or 2% better, whether it's mentally, physically, uh, if I can get my hands like two seconds quicker, if I can get my feet a few seconds quicker, I mean, it just goes such a long way. So uh, I, I, I think just being able to like narrow my focus just on me as an athlete this year. Um, also too, we have a lot of help around us. Like we have a full-time nanny. My, my wife, uh, recently just sold her water bottling business just so she can, you know, kind of be, uh, be micromanaging all of my stuff, micromanaging all my departments. Um, and so definitely takes a village, but no, we we're a huge believer in finding good people and hanging on to them. Like my camp administrator, I've had her for the last four years. Her name's Emily Taylor. Uh, she's based out of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. She's totally great. Kyle McKenzie is like one of my best friends. I've known Kyle for the last uh, five years. Uh, not only is he in my cans, but now he's commentating for PPA and he's the coach for my podcast. Anyhow, so we've just, we've been able to like find a lot of very efficient people and keep them on staff. And, and just with that has allowed me to be much more successful has allowed me to be much more uh, freed up that way. Like when I'm home, I can just simply focus on training. So just so you guys are aware, like a, like a day at home with me, I'm usually up by five. I try, I try to get anywhere from like six to eight hours of sleep. It seems like being a dad, you know, as long as I get like five or six, I'm, I'm pretty good. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm usually up by five. I'll do cold and hot therapy in the morning. I'll do like 30 minutes in the sauna, uh, 10 minutes in the cold plunge. Uh, something that Joe Rogan says on, on his podcast, and he's, he's said it a bunch, David Goggins says it as well, is that in the morning you want to conquer your inner, you know what, like not, nice and early, conquer ten, that inner ten bitch basically, in right? Plunge? 10 minutes in that well, plunge, it, baby, 40, 40, do or 40, die. 40. No, uh, so I, I usually leave mine around like 45, 46. Uh, if you're a complete savage, you can go like 38. Uh, I am not quite there though. Ten minutes is, uh, 10 anyhow, minutes so is much respect. That's crazy. Woo! <laughs> uh, anyhow, so after the cold and hot, I'll go see my guy Craig, uh, Craig Feisner. Um, Craig's my full time trainer now. Uh, comes on the road with me half the time. Handles handles my nutrition. Handles my supplements. Um, anyhow, so I'll I'll see Craig from like from like uh, uh, six thirty to seven thirty. I'll do hot yoga from seven thirty to eight thirty, wow. uh, and then I'll then I'll usually have like a big breakfast in the morning. I'll try to get like uh, sixty to eighty grams of protein uh, in my in my breakfast in the morning, and then uh, and then practice for two hours. Lunch, try to go heavy with protein uh, during lunch. Come back do a second practice, and then obviously after that second practice, then I'm home by two or three. I can do all my recovery stuff. I can do cold and hot again. I can use my compression boots. I can hang out with the family. I can hang out with the kids. But I, I, I kind of spend like every day from I don't know two to two to eight, just more family time and and nothing pickle related and and all that. You're so. a, you are a beast. Like I, I I love it, man. I think I, I appreciate you breaking down yeah. your your regimen. I think I think that's really yeah, yeah. cool to hear. Um, I have a three year old. Jason has three kids and. I'm trying to figure out how to manage, ma squeeze it all in. And I think I just realized I wake up too late. Uh, cause I'm missing like two hours of time to get out. And I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, man, you can get so much stuff done in the morning. And like, I don't know, I've, I've always been a morning guy. Uh, and, uh, you know, also to my content guy lives over in Florida. My camp administrator lives over in South Carolina. So, you know, 5.00 AM here is 8.00 AM over there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I just think, uh, you can really get a lot of stuff done early. And, um, uh, I feel like personally with getting up early and getting all that stuff done, I'm usually in bed by eight or nine. I sleep like a baby. Um, I'm like such a weirdo too. If I, if I eat too late, I sleep like shit. If I go to bed too late, I sleep like shit. So I try to like 
at least get in bed by eight or nine. And, you know, I, I, I just think sleep is necessary. Um, and in order just to live a good, healthy life and to like recover after a long day of working out, doing yoga, doing four hours on court, if I don't get a good night's rest, like there's just no way I can come back and be the I same man. Dinner at I eat dinner at <clears throat> nine sometimes. <laughs> don't do that. You make some poor uh, choices. Jerry, Jerry makes some poor choices. He's like snarfing down a donut at 1030 and he's like, I'm going to regret true. this in the morning. That's, why. Uh, that's, <laughs> no, that's, that's, uh, that's funny. But yeah, so like, you know, for, for all like the viewers and listeners out there, if you're wondering how I reinvented myself, it's with this health, it's uh, with this health company, it's with my trainer. And, and honestly, it's just like I've, I've spent the last, you know, six or seven years in the industry doing like 40 camps a year, like literally just grinding and towards the end of the year, I suffered. I suffered from it. I had a bunch of weird, like, mental health things going on just because, like, I just I, – I tried to, like, push myself to the limit with doing 40 camps and 20 tournaments and kids and content and all the above, and it was just way too much. And now I'm in such a good headspace, and I know who I am. I, I know my identity. I talk to my therapist once a week, and I've just – I've found just a much better version of myself as an athlete, as a dad, as a human – and, uh, you know, I, I think what's, what's cool about sports right now, man, is that so many athletes are coming out and talk about talking about mental health and talking about using a therapist. And and um, I don't know, something that's been huge for me is just getting a better sense of who I am. Oh, that's <clears> awesome. <throat> yeah, I was, I was going to say, uh, yeah. I don't you know, you, you mentioned that you went to a therapist. I think that we are seeing people start to talk about that and the realities of especially being in a high stress job where you are supposed to win all the time. That is how you make your livelihood. And when you're not, or you're feeling in a funk, it could really mess with your head. And so I, I think that, go ahead. No, no. I mean, like, like I can totally see players on the PPA tour that are going through it, but nobody's, nobody's talking about it. Right. Like, you know, it's true. Like it's very, it's very open, and why, um, why are they not? Why are they not so, talking about it? I, 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 so it's a, well, it's a, at, yeah. I think it's it's a mixture of that. I think it's obviously it's pride. It's tough to talk about. Nobody wants to talk about their inner demons, you know. Uh, and I, I think it takes a certain type of individual just to be confident enough to even bring it personal up. You know, personal growth and personal transformation, men, you know, men's circle work, like that stuff's been critical to my life. So I appreciate you as an athlete role model in the sport yeah. talking about it. I think it's, it's, uh, it's awesome. So yeah, you, sure. it, we had a chance, um, Tyson, we had a chance to talk about this back in, I want to say it was in Austin, a PPA Austin. Um, we, we got to talking about your kids and your family, man. And we, and as we got to talking, you revealed that Skylar is special needs And Skylar, I think is your oldest. Is that right? And yeah. tell us a little bit yeah, about correct. Skylar. Tell us a little bit about what that, how that changes you as a person, as a father, how you parent and how it changes you. Cause I know that, you know, people, parents of special need children, their outlook on the world changes a little bit. And we see all the bravado on the court and we see a slam and a Miller light afterwards, but there's a different side right. to Tyson McGuffin that I don't think a lot of people know about. Yeah. And, and tell us a little bit about Sky. Yeah, so I think uh, first and foremost, I'm about as soft as they come. Even though on the court, I'm pumping my chest, I'm slamming beers, I'm acting all confident, and all the above. Deep down, uh, to my core, I'm a, I'm a total dad. And if if I had any more daughters, if I had more than one, there's no way I would be playing professional pickleball. I would definitely be a stay at home dad, if you know what I mean. Um, anyhow, so so Sky, 16, nicest guy you'll ever meet. Uh, he's got he's got this syndrome called Smith McGinnis. His uh, circadian rhythm is backwards, so like essentially his melatonin uh, kicks in during the day versus at night. Uh, but he's very high functioning. My wife has put a ton of time and effort and education into his syndrome, into g getting him help, into using resources and all the above. And so he's uh, leaps and bounds compared to other kids, you know that you know that that have that same syndrome but um yeah so you know when he goes to school he's got a full-time aide uh after school he sees a wide range of uh, of uh different therapies um he's probably never gonna drive a car he's never you know gonna work a job by himself he's probably gonna live with us until you know we're obviously you know still trying to figure that out until he's 25 or 30 he's probably gonna be in high school until he's 22 or 23 but no just like my way of parenting now the man I am today, and honestly, one of the reasons why I fell in love with my wife was just seeing how patient she was with Skylar, 
seeing how like nothing could ever get under her skin and she was just a total boss right and i had never seen any of that i i had kind of kind of grown up with more of just a a, a selfish surrounding with with brothers and 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 a dad as a wrestling coach and all the above and so just to see how selfless my wife was uh, honestly like made me such a better human and then obviously like the last you know we've been married for about six years now so for the last six years being around skylar being being a stepdad to skylar uh no it, it's it's made me a better man it's made me a lot more patient and it's made me uh uh just a much better parent towards my other children as well i'll tell you what uh but uh yeah obviously there's 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 certain days where you know he has uh different like behavior things and there's certain days where we go up to his room and you know he doesn't have a whole lot of control of of certain things and so anyhow there's just a lot of messy moments but i wouldn't change it for a thing you know um and uh and it's like it's it's who we are it's 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 who we own and anybody that comes in our inner circle knows the work that needs to be done with sky so i don't know it just seems like whether it's my friends or it's or it's makes family or it's my family everybody plays such a big part with yeah. sky it takes a village you said it and uh no and for, for i think sure. i think i'm i appreciate you one talking about it because i think there's a lot of people out there that just see the 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 beer chug in tyson and no right it, for sure, yeah, right. Like, we're right. all we're all dealing with something right and and you talked about your mental health you talked about you know fatherhood and, and no one's you know got the the glow around them all the time and so we have real lives and real problems and real issues and everybody deals with it differently and so i i applaud you for being able to at times compartmentalize that and portray one image here and be something else over here but the whole tyson is a pretty awesome tyson so you know appreciate you being Thanks, you. Man. um yeah and it, i mean something that you know like i i used to uh travel around by myself, not, not bring the family and all that. And there's a handful of players that obviously do that. Uh, honestly though, I was such a bad loser. Like I could easily, if I'm by myself, I could easily dive into a hole for about five hours, go back to my hotel room, be, be a piece of work for a long time, not talk to anybody. And it's tough to be a piece of work when you have to go back to your house and see your kids. True. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, it, it, is, it, it is tough to be a piece of work when you, had a loss that you shouldn't have lost to, or it was like an embarrassing loss. And, um, I don't know. It just, it, it makes me more of a man. It, it keeps me accountable. And when I'm on the road and I'm grinding and I'm worried about different results and all that, it just makes me feel like I'm playing for something that's much bigger than myself. And I can't tell you how much pressure that takes off of me knowing that it's not just me. Like I'm, I'm doing it for my trainer and I'm doing it for a wild health and I'm doing it for my wife. And I'm doing it for the kids. Uh, and I, 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 I can't tell you how, how selfless I've become. Obviously I'm still selfish in plenty of ways, but how selfless I've become just, I guess, uh, seeing it through, through that lens and having a bigger team around me and giving credit to the people around me. And, uh, I, I, I just feel like I've become like a much better man with using the resources around me versus being so stubborn and like putting a wall up. So, so you uh. mentioned the team around you. And this leads us to the topic du jour. Uh, obviously, PPA, MLP had a kind of falling out this weekend during the Kansas City tournament. Uh, news was made. You've signed with MLP, a team format. Uh, any thoughts on what's going on in the world of pickleball and in you know, handle this any way you want, but is there a reason, is there a reason why you won MLP over PPA? And, and, you know, just, just, I'll, right. I'll leave it at that, but anything that you want to add color to, I'd love to hear about it. And I honestly, I would, I would love to give insight. Uh, we're actually filming a pod tomorrow and we're going to cover a lot of this stuff. Um, something I, something I can speak on though, was that, um, yeah, I mean, obviously, um, and it's not on the PPA. It's not on. It's not on MLP at all. But it was just. It was a very awkward weekend. Uh, this last weekend, all you know, all being in the pro lounge together. The PPA staff was there. Uh, some players are you know staying PPA. Some are were going MLP. Talking about it? Were they like? Oh, of, of course they were talking about it. That was the only discussion. No, no, but like, but like, openly, and, people and, like someone would be like, I'm I'm going MLP 100. percent I'm going PPA. Like that was it was out there. Yes, yes, very much so. And there was a lot of banter with players that signed with MLP saying, hey, like maybe this is the last dance. 
yada yada yada. And I don't know, deep down I'm like, no, like no way. There's no way this is this is the last dance, right? Um anyhow, so uh that, that's kinda all I can say. We're gonna we're going to film a pod, uh, K-Mac and my wife and I are going to film a pod tomorrow or Wednesday. And so we'll, so we'll come out with a lot more information, but, uh, but yeah, just, um, just the whole dynamic, like the timing, how like abrupt everything was, how quick things were. Uh, I, I, I think there was just a lot of players that were very stressed out over this last weekend. And, uh, not only that, but, but they were having to make a decision and they were in like the midst of a tournament. So there's a lot going on. For so is, sure. is it safe to say that you might prefer the team format more than the individual or double? No, I mean, honestly, like I, I was talking to my agent and my wife about this last night. Um, being that inner wrestler in me loves the grind, uh, loves to like prove myself, loves to take on the challenge. And so uh, obviously, you know, it, it's a, it's a, a bit more cushiony going the team route. Um, but no, to my core, I obviously love to prove who I am. I, I love to prove, you know, what I can do. And obviously you can do that better through tour stops, right? Yep, for sure. All right, Tyson, we've reached the, the, the point of the podcast that all our guests love the most. Do you have any questions for us? Do I have any questions for you guys? Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't believe so. No. Fantastic. A lot of, a lot of people say that as well. (laughs) (laughs) I I will say Tyson, when I discovered Um, the sport, I I got invited to play and then, uh, instantly just fell in love. Um, I was playing with a a wooden Monarch paddle and then I was after my second game, I'm like, Monarch special. I got to get a real paddle. And, and I discovered two people. I discovered you and I discovered Scott Golden. Uh, in my, in my internet search and, (laughs) and I became pretty just like reading your backstory of the wrestling. I became just a fan without ever seeing, I'd never seen you play. I hadn't seen you on TV or, or on the streams or in person, obviously. Uh, but you were one of those first people that just hooked me. And I think it's so interesting. Now I talk to people all the time at courts around the country and everyone brings up your name. And there is a guy named Ben Johns who people will say is the best player in the world. But like you have become the most memorable player in the world. You are the guy. And I think what you said about being the nicest and, you know, top athlete and marketable, like you've done an amazing job. But I even think before this transformation, you were extremely marketable. So um, I just thank you for being a part of that journey for me and and inspiring me to to really just fall in love more with the sport and uh, just on the success you've had, man. I think it's amazing as as kind of one of the older guys. Whenever I see you playing Connor Garnett, I'm just like I love Connor, love Connor, but I'm always I'm always no, pulling for you. Who, who doesn't pulling love for Connor? Because I'm like that's right. someone who I'm a little closer in age to, uh, and I just think right. it's great. So just want to say that. Well, thanks, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. And and something you guys should always know is that I will always stay true to who I am. <clears throat> you know what I mean? We appreciate um, it. But but thanks again, Jared. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for, for hanging out with us and, and listening to Tyson. Tyson, much luck moving forward. Are we maybe going to see you in Cincinnati, Atlanta? Do, do oh, we know where next is? I, y- <laughs> yes, yes. I would assume this whole year is going to stay the okay, same. Good. I, I, I'm pretty sure. I'm not positive, <laughs> but I, I, would, I would like it to stay the same. And I, and I, I think if both sides – want this thing to go over smoothly, I, I think it should go that route, I right? Think so. I, and I and I'm, I am still incredibly hopeful that we will, cooler heads will prevail. The players got paid and that's great for the players. Uh, and let's uh, now work on what's great for the fans and for both of these organizations. Cool. Thank you, gentlemen. You got it. Thanks, Thank you. Tyson.